What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Spoilers incoming for Deadpool and Wolverine. We are going to be talking about the ending and of course the post credit scene. So that is your official warning. We are diving into spoilers right now. So of course to understand the ending of the film and the post credit scene, there are a few points that you do have to know that happened during the movie. So during the movie, we find out that Deadpool's timeline is dying. And while it is going to take a couple of thousand years, Mr. Paradox wants to speed this up using a device that would kill the entire timeline instantly, which he kind of calls a mercy kill. So now, of course, everybody who Deadpool loves, all of those nine people, Blind Al, Yukio, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Colossus, Shatterstar, Dopinder, of course, our man Peter, Buck, and Vanessa, who he is currently no longer with, but of course he is still in love with her and she is a big driving factor for Deadpool throughout the entire movie internally for him, especially with the final scene which we're about to get to. So Mr. Paradox reveals his plan to expedite the death of essentially everybody he loves, plus you know, billions of other people in the timeline, and of course Deadpool is not cool with this. Now Mr. Paradox did reveal that each universe, each timeline has an anchor being, an anchor entity, and if that person dies, well, so does the universe. Well, the Wolverine from Logan, the movie Logan, he is the one who died and he was the anchor being. He died in the movie Logan. So that movie takes place in the same timeline and the same universe that the previous Deadpool movies and the previous X-Men movies were set in. So Deadpool just says, well, fine, I'll just find another Logan, bring him to my universe, and that should solve the problem. Therefore, Mr. Paradox won't have to destroy the timeline and everybody I love. So he breaks Mr. Paradox's nose, takes a TVA time travel device, a temp pad, and he goes and he searches for variants of Wolverine, trying to find the perfect Wolverine, giving us some great variants of Wolverine along the way, like a comic accurate, super short five foot three Wolverine. And of course, this is Hugh Jackman just CGI down to look five foot three. We also have a John Burns suit Wolverine who is fighting the Hulk and he recreates that iconic cover with the Hulk and the reflection of Wolverine's claws. And then of course we see the Hulk himself pop up. Unfortunately, we didn't get to witness a fight between Wolverine and the Hulk, but hey, maybe in Secret Wars or something leading up to Secret Wars. But out of all of the Wolverine variants, perhaps the best variant that we got was Henry Cavill as a Wolverine variant, Cavalrine, in which Deadpool tells him that they'll take much better care of him than those down the street, of course, talking about DC and Warner Brothers. But he finally gets to the Wolverine variant who let down his entire world. He brings him back to Paradox and says, hey, this is my new anchor. We're all good now, right? But Paradox says, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Plus that Wolverine let down his entire world. And we go on to find out that the X-Men were attacked when Wolverine wasn't there. He got back and it was too late. Everybody was dead. And then he went on a killing spree and he didn't just kill the bad. He killed some good people as well. But this is not a part of Agent Paradox's plan. So he sends both of them, Wolverine and Deadpool, to the void. This, of course, is where we get our epic Deadpool versus Wolverine fight scene, one of the fight scenes, that is. And then Chris Evans makes a cameo appearance, but not as Captain America like Deadpool thinks he is, but as the Human Torch. And this is where the post credit scene comes into play. They all get captured and we find out that Chris Evans is the Human Torch has been there for a while and that there are other people on the outskirts who survive Cassandra Nova. That's important for later. But basically, when Deadpool Pull and Wolverine and the Human Torch get to Cassandra Nova, she comes out and she says that she had been looking for Johnny Storm for a pretty long time. So Deadpool takes this opportunity to sort of throw him under the bus and say that he said a whole bunch about Cassandra Nova. Johnny Storm denies saying all of this, but Deadpool is very convincing and Cassandra Nova just rips the flesh right off of Johnny Storm and he dies, well, one would hope, pretty instantly. But one very important thing to note about this scene is that Cassandra Nova cannot read Deadpool's mind or the Human Torch's mind because as we learn in the movie, she has to physically touch them. Well, that's not really the right word. She has to physically stick her hands inside of their head to actually go inside of their mind. So in this moment, Cassandra Nova is not reading the mind of Johnny Storm and going, oh, I see it. I see that he really did say that. She can't go into either of their minds. So she 
basically takes Deadpool at his word, and since she's been wanting Johnny Storm for a while, she basically just decides to kill him right then and there. Now, of course, as the movie goes on, there are a few moments where they really make us wonder if the Human Torch did say all of those things, but that's where the post credit scene comes in. We see Deadpool in the TVA, and he says that he is tired of people not believing him, and the TVA being the monitoring organization that they are, of course, have footage of the event, so he plays it back, and we hear Chris Evans' as Human Torch say a lot. I won't repeat the vulgarity and profanity, but if you saw it, you know. And if you haven't seen it and you're here anyways, basically he just talks a lot of crap about Cassandra Nova. With one of the final things he says being, you can quote me. And Deadpool says, okay. So when they get there, he automatically throws the Human Torch under the bus. And the post credit scene tells us that he is doing that under the premise that Johnny actually said he could quote him on it. So Deadpool kind of only did what Johnny said he can do. You could also probably argue that he wanted to get him killed because he wishes it was Chris Evans as Captain America, who in the comics, Deadpool absolutely absolutely loves and respects, but since it was Chris Evans as the Human Torch, he was kind of let down and maybe just wanted to get rid of him. And that is the post credit scene, but of course we have to talk about the ending because people have a lot of questions about the ending. At the end of the movie, Cassandra Nova, thanks to Pyro, learns what Mr. Paradox is up to. And she learns about his time killing machine, the Time Ripper. And she wants to get a hold of it so she can use it to basically do whatever she wants with the multiverse. And what that essentially means is that she is going to destroy a lot of universes, including the one that they're in at the end, which is Deadpool's universe. Now the TVA is physically there because it seems like the Time Ripper has to actually be in the timeline for it to work. And also, as we find out in the movie, this is important, Mr. Paradox and his team are off the books. He's kind of a rogue agent at this point in time, meaning the people in charge of the TVA right now, like Hunter B-15, don't know about what they are doing because after the events of Loki season two, they they no longer prune timelines, they actually let them branch so everybody can get a fair shot at life and basically have free will. Loki made this possible at the end of Loki season 2 by essentially allowing the multiverse to live. That's why Mr. Paradox wants to use the Time Ripper because his sole job is to monitor Deadpool's timeline, which is the Fox timeline, until it dies. So basically he has to sit around for thousands of years until it dies. And he wants to speed up that process because he doesn't want to waste his time. And eventually he wants to take over the TVA and be the leader. But now the threat of Cassandra Nova taking over the machine and killing the multiverse is imminent. She gets her hands on the machine and Deadpool and Wolverine show up and Agent Paradox tells them how to kill the machine. However, he does state that whoever does this, whoever decides to kill the machine, will die. This doesn't really phase Deadpool or Wolverine because they both can regenerate. Essentially, they kind of don't believe that they can die, even though Logan did prove that Wolverine can die, given the right circumstances, or the wrong circumstances, whatever you want to call it. But Agent Paradox explains that this is different. This is antimatter, this is matter, and just by the laws of physics of what will happen when they connect the two, they will just completely be disintegrated on an atomic level. So this will be the literal death of them. But of course they both want to do it. Now Deadpool really wants to do it because he wants to finally matter. That's a big point throughout the entire movie. He wants to be somebody, he wants to matter to people. And since Wolverine let down his entire world, he wants to do this as a redemption. And whether he would like to admit it or not, he has grown fond of our Deadpool, Wade Wilson, from the 10,005 universe, which the Fox X-Men universe is officially dubbed. So he says he'll make the sacrifice and Deadpool says a really touching thing at the end. He says, you're the best Wolverine, not the worst, as he's been called throughout the entire movie, but Deadpool does the old switcheroo and says, nah, it's gonna be me. InSync pun intended there because that opening scene with InSync's Bye 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 was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. I absolutely loved it. So Deadpool goes in, hits one of the columns and can't reach the other. But then of course, Wolverine comes in to save the day, busting through the door, grabbing the other column and then grabbing Deadpool's hand in which his shirt immediately rips off, which I know a lot of people probably really enjoyed. The man, Hugh Jackman, still has it. So Hunter B-15, although I'm not sure we should really call her Hunter B-15 anymore, she's not exactly a hunter anymore. It seems like she's kind of running the TVA now. So B-15 comes in and Agent Paradox tries to talk his way out of it, stating that, oh, Deadpool and Wolverine, they were my guys. I had them. We were fighting Cassandra. I lost good men out there. But then 
They come right around the corner alive and well. And it's explained that they actually were able to survive because there were two of them handling all of the power. If it were only one of them, they would have been completely destroyed. But since it was two of them, they were able to share it between the two of their bodies, give us a good shirtless scene for the Wolverine and walk out of it alive. The next part is very, very important. B-15 explains that whatever they did caused the universe to now start growing in health. It was dying before because in the future, Logan would die and that would start the destruction of the universe as was shown in the movie. But B-15 explains that it has now been reversed and the timeline is growing, giving it new life, whatever Deadpool and Wolverine did. Now it could be because this variant of Logan, this Wolverine variant is now in that universe. So he could have become a new anchor. They live it pretty ambiguous, basically stating, hey, whatever you did, it worked. So the bottom line is this universe now lives, which is very interesting because a lot of us thought that this was actually going to be the complete death of the Fox universe. We thought we were going to get a Deadpool kills the Fox universe, but instead he actually saved it. But I believe he did this for a very specific reason, which also ties into one other thing that B-15 did for Deadpool and Wolverine. She somehow, via time travel or whatever it be, brought back Deadpool and Wolverine's team consisting of Channing Tatum's Gambit, Wesley Snipes' return as Blade, Jennifer Gardner back as Elektra, and of course Daphne King back as Laura or X-23. Now we only see Daphne King back as X-23 slash Laura at the end of the film, but since she is back, we could assume that the rest are back as well. Where are they? Well, I'm assuming that they are getting ready for Avengers Secret Wars, or possibly even the next Avengers film, Avengers 5, because it's currently untitled right now. We're hoping that in just a couple of days at San Diego Comic-Con's Hall H, Marvel will reveal what their plans are for that next Avengers film. So if you want to stay up to date with the MCU, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. We'll be covering SDCC all weekend. But I also think that's why they kind of left this universe alive, so it can eventually collide with our Earth 616 main timeline. Remember, this is a separate universe. Each universes have their own main timeline. And since Loki season two, each of those timelines now have branches that go off. But I believe that they left Deadpool's universe alive here and well and growing because I believe that eventually it will grow and collide with our universe. Now, it may not do that naturally. It may take an incursion for that to happen. But I believe that that is one thing that could happen that will give us the Fox X-Men characters in the main MCU. In fact, I think the post credit scene for The Marvels, where Monica Rambeau ends up in a different universe, one where she sees Beast and he mentions Professor Charles Xavier, meaning that that is an X-Men populated universe, I believe that universe could actually be the Fox X-Men universe. So eventually, I believe that these two universes will collide with each other, because that is what happens in the Secret Wars events in the comics and the events that lead up to it incursions start happening, universes collide with each other, ultimately resulting in the destruction of the entire multiverse. Then the events of Secret Wars and the comics take place after that, which is what I think we're heading to in the MCU, the destruction of the entire multiverse after universes collide with each other. Then whoever is left standing at the end will be the ones who have to try and fight to restore the multiverse, defeating whoever the main villain of that film is going to be. Could be Kang, could be somebody else. Kang wasn't mentioned at all during this, which is very interesting because you would think that Ryan Reynolds would take a shot at it, especially considering they did reshoots not too long before the movie came out, probably a couple of months. But again, maybe this weekend we will find out more. So that is the Deadpool and Wolverine post credit scene breakdown and ending explained. Please let me know your thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine. Did you love it? Did you not like it? Did you cry? Did you yell? Did you scream? Let me know everything in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like this video and of course, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the MCU. And of course, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.